The start of the regular Campbell County Commission meeting was nearly 45 minutes late Monday night as commissioners spent nearly an hour raking Environmental Services Director T. Don Boshears over the coals concerning recent changes in convenience center hours and personnel layoffs. Practically every commissioner took a turn at both questioning and criticizing Boshears, who explained that the cutbacks were due to excessive overtime costs that led to a budget shortfall in his department. You don't know a lot of answers to the questions we're asking, and that bothers me, Terry Singley complained after Boshears was unable to give specifics on what it caused the excessive overtime cost. People are telling me that you tell the public it's the county commission's fault, Singley added. Marie Ayers told Boshears that the questions commissioners are asking are the same ones being asked by them, by taxpayers, and Bobby White summed up most commissioners' views in telling Boshears the commission has given you a budget and added to it through amendments. I think that budget has not been spent wisely. Commissioners were able to vent their frustrations but little else since Boshears department is under the direct control of County Mayor William Baird. The Recreation Committee which met earlier took more decisive action by voting to allow advertising signs to be sold for the ball field fences at Lonus Young Park. The revenue from the rental of advertising space will go to increase personnel costs for expanding the park's summertime hours and to provide funds for grass seed and other maintenance costs. During the regular meeting, Commissioners voted on a number of resolutions involving bills pending or proposed in the state legislature, even though some of that legislation has already been withdrawn or postponed. The Commission unanimously approved a resolution opposing the combining of the 8th Judicial District with Anderson County's 7th District. The final legislative plan for reorganizing judicial districts had already been changed last week to leave those two districts intact. However, commissioners also gave unanimous approval to a resolution in support of the rights of the people to keep and bear arms. That includes language authorizing Tennessee to nullify and reject federal gun control laws. That vote was also meaningless as the sponsor of the legislation has withdrawn the bill to avoid a showdown in federal court. The commission decided to delay a resolution on another bill supporting cemetery preservation. Commissioners want to make sure that the pending law would not open the gates to county government having financial responsibility for preserving the abandoned cemeteries. And Mayor Bayard indicated that the bill is still in the study stage and expected to be rolled over until the next legislative session. Commissioners were unanimous in their support of another pending bill that would hold local government officials to the same open meeting restrictions enjoyed by the state legislature. In essence, it would open the door to more secrecy in government, allowing county and city officials to discuss policy in unannounced meetings as long as a quorum was not present for conducting business. Predictably, that bill has strong opposition in Nashville from proponents of open government, including the state's news media. 
One final resolution was proposed by Thomas Hatmaker, but it was not clear if an actual bill is pending that would allow counties to seek competitive bids for professional services currently exempted from competitive bid requirements. Hatmaker criticized the state law earlier during debates over the school board's solar panel program. Hatmaker's motion was voted down 8 to 6. A rather unusual motion was then added to the agenda as the Sheriff's Department requested that the commission declare a dog as surplus property. The dog in question is a canine named Bronco. Bronco's human handler is leaving the department to take a new position with the Clinton Police Department and once a canine has been trained to respond to a handler, it is difficult to retrain the animal to respond to a new handler. Chief Deputy Aaron Evans gave that explanation. The city of Clinton has agreed to pay the Campbell County Sheriff's Department $9,900 to cover the cost of replacing Bronco and training a new canine dog. The motion to declare Bronco as surplus property passed unanimously. A proposal by Beverly Hall to create a solar panel oversight committee was withdrawn after the Board of Education last week indicated that it would respectfully decline the creation of such a committee. Hall pointed out that the financial records that would help commissioners measure the success of the solar panel project are all public records and forming a committee would not be necessary. The town of Caraval hired a new police officer Monday night and nearly had to seek another one before the meeting was over. During a special call meeting of the board of mayor and aldermen Jonathan Bruce was hired upon the recommendation of Caraval Police Chief Johnny Jones. Bruce is a graduate of the Walter State Law Enforcement Academy and is post certified. He is a former jailer and auxiliary deputy with the Campbell County Sheriff's Department. Bruce was one of three finalists for the opening. The other two were Miranda Grubb and former Campbell County Sheriff Gary Perkins. The job came open in late November when Michael Caudill left the department to take a similar job with the Jacksboro Police Department. Jones contacted six candidates that had applied for the position. Several members of local law enforcement called Caraval officials to personally vouch for Bruce. In another matter involving the police department, the board considered disciplinary action against veteran officer Jim Wilson, whom Jones had apparently lost trust in due to a series of incidents over the past several months. Chief Jones recommended the dismissal of Wilson. Vicki Heatherly, a member of the board, made a motion to accept the recommendation of the police chief. However, the motion died due to a lack of a second. Members of the board would not discuss the nature of the allegations, saying only that Wilson did not follow proper procedure. Documents obtained by 1450 WLAF indicate that Wilson failed to properly respond to a domestic disturbance on February 24th, during which a woman threatened suicide. According to a letter to the board, Chief Jones said Wilson refused to enter a residence to check on the woman and contain the situation, left the scene, and then later went home. By not doing his job and performing his duty as an officer, Officer Wilson placed other officers' lives in danger, wrote Jones. 
could have been placed in further danger. Furthermore, placing the town of Caraval in a huge liability and possible lawsuits. Chief Jones also wrote in the letter that he had investigated two other complaints against Wilson, one written and one verbal, stating that the officer had harassed and threatened them due to the severity of these allegations. I consulted Reed Troutman, city attorney, said Jones. Mr. Troutman is concerned about the liability and the possibility of lawsuits which could result from the victims or their families. Therefore, due to the severity of Officer Wilson's actions as the chief of police, I believe it's my duty to strongly recommend to the board of mayor and aldermen to terminate Officer Wilson immediately. Up to this point, the responsibility of Officer Wilson's actions has fallen upon me. As of now, the liability is on you, the board of the town of Caraful. And the community prayer meeting will be held tonight at 7 o'clock at the La Follette Community Center. That's the old West La Follette School, and everyone is welcome to attend. That's the news for today. Be right back with a press release from the Sheriff's Department. And it looks like six people have been booked in to the Campbell County Jail in the past 24 hours. Alicia Lillian Osmus, 28, a pioneer for theft of property, between $1,000 and $9,999. 24-year-old Brittany Leah Boshears of Demery Road, La Follette, for aggravated burglary and theft of property between $10,000 and $59,000. Crystal Luann French, 33, of Circle Drive in Caraville, for theft of property between $1,000 and $9,999. 42-year-old Denny Oscar Lay Jr. of Shady Pine Lane in Newcomb for domestic violence by assault. 50-year-old Carrie Lee Suttles of Knoxville for domestic violence by assault and last today, Michael Allen Taylor, 26, of Whitman Hollow Road, La Follette, for aggravated burglary and theft of property between $10,000 and $59,000. And that's a look at the news and the press release for this evening. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a good evening and join us again tomorrow. We sing happy birthday. Hey, Big Josh, with you once again for our birthday and anniversary club. And looking at our birthdays today, Mary Maton celebrating a birthday. Happy birthday, Mary. Hayden Hall, three years old today. Happy birthday to you, Hayden. And Lakin Smith is five. Happy birthday, Lakin. And Leanne Copeland is celebrating today. Happy birthday, Leanne. And Annalisa McCullough is celebrating today. Happy birthday to Annalisa. And Dorothy Wells is having a birthday today. Happy birthday to you, Dorothy. And from yesterday, Anthony Sexton had a birthday, and we hope uh, all of you had or are having a great day. And we have a belated anniversary uh, today. Paul and Mary Bell Hubbard celebrated 60 years. So happy anniversary, happy number 60 to Mary Bell and Paul. And we hope your day was great. Now, if you're celebrating your birthday or your anniversary today, and for some reason we don't have your name on our list, hey, we want you to have a super day. But remember this, the only way to qualify for the drawing that we have on Friday for you to win a birthday dinner for two or an anniversary dinner for two from WLAF and Eastside Pizza and Deli is if we have your name in here. Hey, have a great one. Good Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow.